Praise the Lord, saints. Come on, let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. For he is worthy to be praised tonight. Amen. It's our youth night. Amen. We just ask everyone, if everyone can just kind of move closer to the front. Amen. So our youth to feel the love. Amen. So they'll feel your love upon them. You're touching upon them. So I just ask that everybody move a little bit closer to the front on tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those that are tuning in. Amen. Via the social media or all our media platforms. Forms, amen. Those of you that are on Facebook, we ask that you like and that you share us. Amen. And for anyone you may know of that does not have internet access, they can dial this number and listen to the broadcast live. And that number is 646-716-9961. Again, that's 646-716-9961. And for those of you that are, are live and you're looking and you're wondering what's going on, this is our youth night. Amen. This is where we turn the service over to the youth, amen, and then they go ahead on and bless us, amen, with all of the things that they've done, and they've come a long way, so we ask that uh, you continue to pray for them, amen, that you will continue to lift them up, amen, that they will continue to be the next generation, amen, that's going to pour the salt upon the world, amen, amen, so we pray that they don't lose their flavor, amen, amen, so now at this time, I'm going to step out the way, and I'm going to turn things over to our youth department. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may is. Gotta tell me. Those 124. Say oh, the scripture okay. is going to come from Psalms. Okay. Um, the scripture is coming from Psalms 124, verse 1 through 8. Psalms 124, verses 1 through 8. Verses 1 through 8. Right. Amen. 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 If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel sing. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they swallowed us up a quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to, the, to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Come on, let us worship with the youth choir at this time.
let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise for that performance right there. Amen. We got a new dynamic duo. Amen. Amen. It is testimony time. Amen. Can I get my testimony people over this way, please? My testimony helper, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Jabari, testimony helper. Uh. <laughs> Gone a long way. Over here. Come on, come on. Amen, amen. It is now testimony time. Amen, amen, amen. Here. We're going to take three testimonies. We're going to take three testimonies. Who want to testify? Who want to testify? Say, come on, don't be shy. Come on, don't be shy. Sister Gail. <laughs> Sister John Tay, you're next. Hold on, dude. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stay up here with me, man. Thank you, Lord. First of all, I want to give God praise for these wonderful young people. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, I want to thank God for just being sensitive to his spirit. I went to work on yesterday, and um, I wasn't supposed to work yesterday because of convocation and things coming up. I decided to go in yesterday, um, you know, build up my little, you know, my little favor so they won't be fussing. So one of the young ladies who works at the store came in, and when she saw me, she said, oh, Miss Gail, I'm so glad you're here. I need to, I need to transfer. I need to transfer. It's an emergency. I need to leave. And she came in the office. She said, I didn't even think you were here. I'm just so glad you're here. And she always have a bright smile on her face. She always looked so pleasant. And she's a cashier. And you know, you know, I love my company. But you know, sometimes our cashiers are less than pleasant. And she's one of the sweet, pleasant ones. And so she just began to tell me why she needed to leave and all the problems she was having with her family and how misunderstood she felt and this and that. And so I, you know, helped to do what she needed to do to get that transfer going. And <clears throat> she began to talk. She said, I knew I was, something was going to happen today. I just knew it was going to happen today. And then she said, because, uh, you know, I'm kind of spiritual, so I look at my tarot cards. And, you know, I took a little breath, and I said, okay, Lord, you open the door, now what we say. So, you know, I just kept, you know, talking to her and talking to her about, you know, strained relationships with family and how... God has blessed me to overcome those things and all of that. And then I looked on my bulletin board, and thanks to Sister Catherine and the Kano Bookstore, I had a bookmark hanging on the wall with scriptures on it. And I said, well, you know what? I want you to do this. I want you to go do what you got to do. Take care of yourself and your daughter. Get yourself straight. Call me if you need anything, even if you just need to talk, even if you just need to pray. And I want you to get your Bible and read these scriptures. And I just thank God for causing me to go because I almost didn't go. At the last minute, I said, I'm not going. I'm not going to worry about it. But I believe that God had me go just specifically for her. So I want to give God all glory and honor and praise for putting me in the right place at the right time. In Jesus' name. Sister Jonte. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> um, I just want to thank God for graduating <laughs> next month. <laughs> um, it's been <laughs> it's been like a, a crazy journey, I guess, because I really was supposed to graduate a semester early. I know y'all saying like, okay, it's just a semester, but. A lot of stuff happened. They had some people coming against me, and some of those people succeeded. And I was just down on myself. Like, I, I had this plan, like, I needed to graduate in four years. Like, that's what I needed to do. And I guess, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lord, 
why are you doing this? Because I had a plan set for my life. Like, I had to graduate four years. I was going to be doing my career in four years. And seeing everybody graduate before me that was in my class, it just, I don't know, it just frustrated me. And then I guess it was for the better because actually I have to go back and get my master's to do what I need to do. So originally I wasn't going to get my master's, so I guess it's just... It's better than it would have been if I would have just got my bachelor's. I wasn't going to get my master's, so I guess it worked out in a way, but God, I just had to trust the Lord that it was going to work out because it wasn't going how I wanted it to go. <laughs> so I just want to thank God for just trusting him and just knowing that even though it's delayed, I still get it done. So, I just want to thank God for just graduating and continue to do what I want to do and not giving up and not thinking that that was the end. So, yeah. Hey Amen. I want to hear some from some young people. From some young people. I need a young person. We're not closing out till you give me a young person. We're not closing out till you give me a young person. I'm still a young person. <laughs> May I sit down to read this? Because the, I just want to ask y'all a question. A warrior or a warrior? Which one are you? One little letter makes the difference. Are we a warrior or a warrior? A warrior is prepared for battle, to fight for what is right. A warrior is fearful of everything in sight, always thinking negative and all that can go wrong. But a warrior puts on all his armor and sings his battle song. As we stand before our enemy with the word in our hand, we know we have the victory because our Lord is in command. Let us continue in our struggles as we fight to save our souls. And we reach and we have been perfected to reach our heavenly goal. Don't look at what's behind us. Forget that fear and dread. Let's run this race with patience, looking at what lies ahead. So do not let a little A or a little O hinder your trust in God no matter where you go. So put on all your armor and put that old devil to shame as we fight this daily battle in our Savior Jesus' name. Kylie. Kylin. Um, I just want to tell you today that um, I'm going to church today and I got to swing in the choir with everybody else. And that God woke me up this morning to see everybody beautiful faces today and to come to the house of the Lord to praise him today. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for all the testimonies. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for all the testimonies. Let's receive elder Hamburg with a hand clap. Let's receive elder Hamburg with a hand clap of praise. All right. Thanks. Go give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We thank you. Praise God. It's offering time in the sanctuary. Didn't you have a wonderful turnout of these young people tonight? Amen. Amen. All right, young people, whoever brought you here tonight, you tell them on the first Sunday of every month that you need to be here for the teaching sessions. Amen. And then on the second Sunday, you can apply everything that you learned from the teaching sessions on the first Sunday. Amen. And the second Sunday. Amen. So we're holding you responsible, young people, for making sure whoever got you here tonight gets you here on the first Sunday of every month. Amen. Can y'all do that? Amen. We thank and praise God. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Offering time. For those of you on Facebook, you can give by cash app, dollar sign, C-A-N-O Church, or Giblify, the Apostolic Church at New Orleans. Amen. We do have electronic giving in the rear. For those that need envelopes, raise your hands. The ushers uh, be more than happy to accommodate you. Amen. We just take and praise God. 
I see Sister Pat's grandbaby got the same range in soprano that she has. Almost the same tone and two. Amen. We thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right. We thank you. Praise God. So we appreciate God. Now, uh, anybody not going to the convention that's here tonight or even all out in virtual, give your offering for the CAF convention tonight. Amen. And no later than Wednesday, but tonight we're looking forward to, we want you to support, even though you're not going to be there, we need your financial support. Amen. So we thank and praise God. We're looking forward to, forward to that. Amen. You also in the sanctuary can give by Cash App. That's dollar sign C-A-N-O Church or also as well. Amen. We just thank and praise God. Hallelujah. Have everybody been having a good time? Amen. We thank God for these young people. Amen. They keep us young. They keep us young. Can you take this envelope for me and give it to uh, the ushers back there? Thank you. All right. Let's give Brother Corey a hand crap of praise. We thank you, praise God, for the man of God. Amen. Being here with us tonight. Hallelujah. How many of y'all blessed in here tonight, huh? All right. Everybody taking advantage of this opportunity? This is an opportunity. Let me tell you, you've been sowing in good ground. Amen. We thank and praise God. Amen. What was once money has now become seed. And because you were a cheerful giver, you shall have all your need. Amen. I'm going to bless the offering and then prepare to bring our speaker upon tonight, which we thank and praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for these young people tonight, oh God, and the way that they bless us. We pray, oh God, that you bless this offering that we're receiving, oh God, and we pray that you bless as your word prescribed. Some 30, 60, 100 for We give you all the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise. We thank you and praise God. Amen. All right, this is not offering I'm putting in my, these are envelopes that I'm going to give and make sure that they get. Yeah, I just want, I'm on Facebook and I'm sticking envelopes in my pocket. I'm like, oh, well, on now, y'all got to make sure. We understand what's going on here. Amen. Let us all stand as we prepare to receive our speaker for tonight. None other than a black belt in karate. Oh, yes. Retired military man. Happy Veterans Day. Amen. And a young man that grew up in this ministry. Amen. Brother Mike Owens, Jr. Amen. We thank and praise God for, for this man of God. Let's receive him with a heart of love by saying amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, just pray and have everyone can sit down right after that. So, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity tonight, Lord. Lord, I ask that you use me, Lord. I ask that, that I become less, that you become more, Lord. And, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. And I ask that everything that I have to say, Lord, that you speak through me and that it reaches someone in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have a seat. 
So before I get started, I want to give thanks to God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Bishop Boyd, thank you for this opportunity. Um, give honor to Lady Boyd, all right, my father who's not here tonight, and all of the elders, ministers, and saints that are here tonight. And I want to thank the Lord for my wife. I don't have one, but I'm just practicing. So. <laughs> So tonight, tonight I want to go ahead and talk out of uh, Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12 is an interesting chapter. It's, um, it's when Jesus was in Jerusalem, uh, right around the time of the Passover. And uh, he was, I won't say he was debating, but he was getting asked questions by the, the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, you know, they were first off, they started by questioning Jesus' authority, like, what authority do you have to speak like this and to speak to, um, you know, just to, to preach the way you are? Then he gave the parable um, of the vineyard. Then they had a debate about tax and then started asking questions about life after that, you know, the resurrection. And, you know, you know, a lot of times some people thought back then, a lot of people thought that you know, life after that was just a continuation of what was on earth. You go to the, I guess you die and you get resurrected and you just continue off where you left off. But that's, um, they were just talking about that. But one of the things that I want to talk about tonight is that the next topic that they talk about was the greatest commandment. And I'll go ahead and that I'll read this opening scripture. Um, it's going to be from Mark 12, uh, verses 28 through 34. And I am reading from the Amplified Version, not the King James, so if you want to just follow along. Um, verse 28 starts off by saying, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus answered, is this, O, o Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are in writing saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all of your heart, with all of your understanding and with all of your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to the man, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. So uh, today I was just, you know, when reading this, I was like, well, what, what should I, you know, what should I, what should I talk about tonight? You know, Bishop gave me about two days to prepare for this. <laughs> well, more like four hours, but we all, all good, Bishop. <laughs> But no, 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 we're all God. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I like to mess with Bishop Eric so often about that. But, um, but I want to come from verses 31 and 30, well, 31, where it says, the second of this is love your neighbor as thyself. And a lot of times when we talk about that scripture, we talk about, we, we focus on the part that says, love your neighbor. But tonight I want to focus on the, as thyself, or as yourself part. So my topic, if I have that one, is going to be loving thyself. Because um, we all know that it's hard to love others if we can't love ourselves. And with the world around us these days, we know that a lot of people don't love themselves. Um, whether they act out at work, um, whether they act out in relationships, uh, social media, you, you see the world around us is a very, well, for a lot of people, it's a very miserable place. A lot of people are suffering with depression, and I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. I mean, everybody suffers with something. As you see on social media, everybody's going through some type of healing journey. And again, nothing's wrong with that, but we have to learn that we have to just not accept that you know, we're, going, we're fighting with depression or we're fighting things with our life, but we have to learn that we have to love ourselves. All right. And according to Webster's Dictionary, I like to give definitions. Self-love means or is an appreciation of one's own worth or virtue 
or proper regard for and attention to one's own happiness or well-being. So why is, self, why is loving yourself important? All right, so that goes all the way back to the beginning of the Bible. Um, in Genesis it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our own image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the animals, and over all the creatures that, that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So if, if anything, you start off with that, all right? We were not created in the image of our parents. We're not, we were not created in the image of our grandparents. Although those folks had a part in our foundation and helping shaping us today, but Genesis says that we were created in the image of God. So we have to, 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 to start with the self-love journey. You have to understand that you are created in the image of the creator himself. So everything that is unique about you, you have to understand that God created you for a specific purpose. All right. I know that we all look differently. We all have different gifts, you know, but it was supposed to be that way. None of we were not all supposed to be the same. I'm not supposed to be like Bishop. Bishop's not supposed to be like Brother Watson back there. We're not supposed to be like each other. We're supposed to be like minded in a way that we worship God. But we all have our different gifts and talents and we have to understand that. All right. So why is loving yourself important? All right. And on the secular side, when I mean secular side, I'm just talking about in your everyday living. Yeah. All right. It's important to love yourself because loving yourself makes it easier to say no when you really need to. All right. All right. We deal with people all day. Everyone that we come into contact, you know, is not in holiness. And unless you're living under a rock, you're not going to always be around people that are in holiness. You're going to be around coworkers. You're going to be around your own family members that are not in holiness. You're going to be around a lot of other people in your everyday journey. But some of those people are close to us than others. And if we love ourselves, we have to, we, it'll make it easier, as again, to say no when we really need to. When those bad influences come or when someone's trying to force you to do something that you know isn't right or someone's trying to move you into a path that you know isn't right. If you don't love yourself, you're going to say yes, you're going to do it. Why? Because now you're seeking acceptance from someone else. And if you don't love yourself, you're going to go through a whole life of trying to seek acceptance from someone else. And that's going to send you down the downward spiral because at some point in your life, whether it's in midlife, whether it's later in life, you're going to realize that you didn't live life for you. You live life for someone else. And that's just going to make the situation even worse. So remember, that's, that's the reason why you should love yourself, because it makes it easier to say no. Again, why, should I, why is loving myself important? Because you're learning to, lo learning to love yourself prevents you from seeking approval from others. I just mentioned that in the last, if you love yourself, obviously you're going to ask people for advice. You know, we, we're not meant to be alone. We're not, meant, we're not meant to just be under a rock and just be by ourselves. You know, we see, we have friends, we have family members, we talk to our friends and family members on, on a daily basis. We have obstacles or even good things that come in, in our lives and we, you know, we seek advice. Um, but seeking advice is not seeking approval. Um, because Just because I ask someone for advice doesn't mean that I'm going to do what they say so I can seek their approval. But when you don't love yourself, that's what you do. You do things based on how other people will perceive that action. If you feel like that action is going to be favorable to, favorable to that person, guess what? You're going to do it because you figure, okay, if you make that person happy, then that person's happy with you, and now I'm happy. So basically, you're, you are making your happiness dependent on how someone else, someone else feels about you, and you don't want to do that in no aspect of life, even with family, with friends, at school, work, wherever you are. Always remember that no one else can make you happy and you shouldn't be relying on someone else to make you happy. So why is loving yourself important? All right. You become more comfortable with the bad days. All right. We all know that every day isn't a good day. All right. We have good days. We have bad days. All right. But when you love yourself, you learn to find the light even in the bad days because you know that even in down moments, there's an opportunity to learn and grow. 
Have you ever seen someone that, I don't know, it could be, again, at work, at school, and a little slight inconvenience, is, inconvenience happened, and they just seem like they just have a meltdown and a breakdown right there. You're, you're left looking like, what happened? All you did was stump your toe on the, on the door, and you're just having a meltdown, you know? And I'm not saying that with self-love, you won't have those type of days, but it'll help you cope through those days, because we're going to have those days. You're going to have those days where you're going to need that love in yourself to really come through for you. Of course, loving Jesus is number one, but you're going to have to love yourself because, again, those bad days are going to come, and you don't want those bad days to kind of consume you and swallow your life. All right? Why is loving yourself important? Loving yourself can help achieve the best emotional relationships with other people. One of the, I, I know a lot of times when I'm up here, I kind of talk about social media a lot because that's, that's the world we live in today. And one of the things that, that if you listen to a lot of people in the world, especially on social media, they'll try to make it seem like everything is supposed to be done by yourself. You know, my circle, you hear it all, all the time, my circle is small. Um, I'm, you know, I could drop you in a second. You, you do one thing wrong and you're gone. Um, just everything, you know, people, uh, you know, if you do something wrong, I'm ghosting you. It's, you hear it all over. And you even hear it in real life. It doesn't have to be on social media. But the biggest, I want to say one of the biggest misconceptions that come from that is that you can do everything by yourself. It, it's, it's a big misconception. You cannot do everything by yourself. All right? You can't do everything by yourself. In life, you need God. At, at work, sometimes you need the help of your coworkers. Here in church, you need each other. Wherever you're at, you need someone else. And if you live a life that you feel like, I can do it all by myself, guess what? That means you're sending yourself again through another downward spiral because you need people. You need to be able to love yourself so you can love others. If, 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 we were not, if we were meant to be alone, Jesus would have never said, love, love your neighbor as yourself. Because if, that wasn't, if, if we were meant to be ourselves, Jesus would be like, well, you don't have to love your neighbor. Guess what? Because you, you can be good by yourself. You can do whatever you want in your own world, in your own room, wherever you're at. You can do it by yourself. But that's not, that's not the route that we need to go. But loving yourself allows you to have those healthy relationships with other people, whether it's uh, platonic friendships, whether it's marriages or whatever it is you have to love yourself to have that best relationship with that other person um and it happens it it i've i've had friends that you know i'm 40 years old i have some friends that got married when they were younger they're now divorced and a lot and some of them not all of them some of them admit that it was because that they chose this person based on again getting acceptance from this person. They chose this person because they figure, I don't love myself, this person can help me to be the best version of myself. Even though you're, somebody can help you be the best version of yourself, but you have, to also, you, have to be, you have to be a key player in that also. You can't leave it to them to help you be the best, best version of yourself, all right? In friendship, same thing. You know, friendships are some of the most important relationships in your life. All right, your friends, sometimes we confide more in our friends than we do in our family. Sometimes we, 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 we talk to our friends more, we, we exchange advice, but again, you can't be so, you can't be to the point where, okay, I'm relying on these people to bring me love, I'm relying on these people to bring acceptance to myself, because what happened, again, if you don't love yourself, you won't be able to, to you won't be able to make it in life. You're going to always be dependent on others, and when others fail you, guess what? And people will fail you. When others fail you, whether it's family or friends, again, you're going to hit that downward spiral. So those are some of the reasons why loving yourself is important. So the next question is, is why do we struggle with loving ourselves? And you notice I'm saying we. I'm not saying you. I'm not throwing this. I'm saying we. Why do we struggle with loving ourselves? One of the reasons that we struggle is that we're constantly worried about what other people have. We're constantly looking at life through a lens of, look what they have and look what I don't have. We, we, you know, we, we struggle with this self-love because if you're always looking at what others have and what you don't have, 
you're going to, again, you're going to send yourself to that depressive state because you're looking at life, instead of looking at life of what I have and being grateful for what you have, you're looking at, okay, this person may have a mansion. Or if you're single, you're looking at this person may be married and I'm not. Or if you're married, you may be like, this person is single and I miss that life, you know? You know, they're out there. <laughs> but, you know, you, if you look at life through the lens of what other people have and what you don't have, you, you're definitely going to struggle with loving yourself. All right? Um, the next reason is we struggle to love ourselves because we put too much of our emotions, and here I go with this, this, this thing, we, we put too much of our emotions into social media. We, you know, and I'm not saying anything is bad with social media because I know a lot of you here follow me and some of you might be like, man, Mike's on social media all day, every day, you know, <laughs> but it's if you put all your emotions into social media, you're going to find yourself in a constant battle to outdo each other. If you scroll through TikTok, all right, you see the same skit over and over and over the same skit, the same no, you, you just hit it all over. And this person says, oh, I got to do this because I need to make it look better than this person. And then you see another skit, and it's the same stuff over and over and over. And I know it seems a little pedestrian, but you got to understand that that carries over into our lives. All right? If we're sitting there and we're trying to outdo people on social media, then we're going to always be trying to outdo others in life. Yeah. All right? And what does that do? Of course, you want to you try to better yourself in life and everything you do. But if you're always trying to outdo others in life, what happens? You never, it's, it's going to stop you from being happy for others. We, we um, like uh, Elder Hemberg mentioned, I teach martial arts, and we just had our tournament on yesterday. Um, it was a week of planning and the students enjoy themselves, but one of the things that I teach them in class prior to the tournament is that you have to, to be a good sport, you have to be a, a good loser and a good winner. And when you're trying to outdo people, you're never going to be happy for others. You have to be happy for others even when you don't have. You have to be happy for others even when they get something that you wanted and they may get it first. You have to be happy for others even if you know that the thing that you won't, you won't ever get, but they have gotten. You have to learn how to be happy. So when you, when you think about social media and you think about people always trying to outdo others, you, you, you see the next, la the, the next latest and greatest sound on TikTok, and you're like, all right, I got to make this video better than this person. Then you see another sound, again, you're trying to, make, you're trying to outdo the last person on TikTok. That stuff, again, it goes into your regular life, and then you're, you're going to never be able to be happy for others. You're gonna always feel like, okay, if someone accomplishes something, guess what? I can do better than that. I can do better than that. If anyone was in the military here, Sister Catherine, Brother Kevin, if, if you're ever in the military and you go, to do, you go on duty, it's all, one thing about the military, someone's always trying to outdo the other person. Someone comes with a brand new truck, guess what? The next person like, you know, I'm going to get a truck and I'm going to get the bigger tires on it. Then the next person comes in, I'm going to get another truck. You know, it's just, and you wonder why when you go on a military base, everybody has the same vehicle. You go to one parking lot, you see 20 F-150s parked in the same line. It's not because everyone wants an F-150. It's because one person decided I want to outdo this person. Then this person decided I want to outdo this person. Then this person decided I want to outdo this person. And that's what happens in life. You can't, if you want to love yourself, you have to understand that, you know, I have to love myself enough to be happy for people when they get the things that I've got and when they get the things that I know I'm never going to get, even though I wanted that. So another thing that, another reason why we shouldn't put too much of our emotions into social media when it comes to self-love is because social media has taught society to that it's okay to possess the bad characteristics in life. All right? If you know, if you watch, if you're on social media, or even in life, even at work, for some reason, it's, it's okay now to, to, to possess toxicity. It's okay to be toxic. It's okay to, it's okay to be petty. It's okay to be selfish. It's okay to be messy. It's okay to be messy and put everyone's 
everyone, if someone confides you, put their mess out on social media. You know, it's okay to, to, to possess those traits that 20 years ago, you would have never, ever admitted that you had those traits. But today it's okay because you know what? One influencer gets on there and says, you know what? I'm going to be toxic today. And you know what? It flows into the, into the crowd. Someone comes on and says, you know, I'm going to be petty today. Guess what? That flows into the crowd. Someone says, I'm going to be selfish. It flows into the crowd, messiness, everything else. And then, again, I know uh, Sister Gail was talking about tarot cards. Again, people put too much into zodiac signs. I'm toxic because I'm a Gemini. Or it's okay that I don't have self-control because I'm a Sagittarius. All right, I bash the windows of my significant other's cars and slash the tires because I'm an Aries and that's what we do, you know? People, people hide behind those gists, but it's really that those people are very miserable in life. And instead of getting the help, instead of seeking the counseling, they hide behind those things. And what it all boils down to is that they don't have that self-love. And again, not having self-love, again, sends you down that, that uh, downward spiral. Another reason why we shouldn't put too much emotions into social media in regards to self-love is because social media has taught us that some of the things that matter in life really don't matter. That everyone, as long as you have the looks and the physical appearance, that's all you need to make it in life. That's what it is. That's why you have people going on these special diets to, to be stick thin. You have some people trying to gain weight. And I understand if you're doing it for health reasons, but social media has taught us that we have to have a certain look. Right. Women have to have a certain look. Men have to have a certain look. And it's taught us, because if, 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 again, if you're on social media and you're scrolling, you can see someone, whether it's male or female, um, and they may be a nice looking being and they can come on and video them not saying nothing, just staring in the video, and you wonder how that person got like 450,000 likes, you know? But social media has taught us that not, it's taught the world, I won't say us, it's taught the world that physical appearance means more than anything, and that's just not the case. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean you can treat people like trash. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean that you're entitled to the things in life. That all comes through your character, that all comes through God first, that comes through your character, and that comes through the hard work that you put into life to excel in life. All right, so lastly, here are some things that will help us with self-love. First, you wanna nurture a relationship with God, all right? And I know a lot of times we come from the point where we, we talk to people like they don't have a relationship with God, but I don't want to do that. So that's what I'm saying. Nurture your relationship with God. Pray daily, study your Bible, and talk to God throughout the day. I remember one of the last times I was up here, I said that, you know, you don't have to pray in or talking to God. It doesn't mean you have to be on your knees all the time and saying these big words and, and figure I have to set three or four times out of the day to do this. It could be anything. It could be any time that you have any idle time that you can, that you can do that. One of the, things, one of the times when I, when I talk to God is when I'm driving to Mandeville. I live in Gretna, and I drive to Mandeville. That's a 50-minute drive there and back. A lot of times going across that causeway, I'm talking to God about the different things that I either, sometimes just thanking him for the opportunities that he's given me. Sometimes it's I'm, 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 I'm talking to him about things that are going on in my life that you know, I need help with. You know, sometimes um, you go through that slippery slope, um, especially when you lose someone that you love and you lost that person, those moments pop up every so often. Sometimes I'm talking to God to help me through those moments. But don't feel that, okay, the only time I need to pray is when I get up in the morning and when I go to bed at night. And don't feel that you have to say these big, holy, macklin prayers and have these big words and, and everything. The keys you need is just sincerity. You need to be sincere when you talk to God. Thank, be thankful. Ask God for what you want. Make sure you repent of your sins. And just talk to God about your needs. And if you have a sincere heart, that prayer will definitely reach God. 
Other things that you can do to help with your self-love <clears throat> is embrace the things that truly makes life worth living. All right, you hear, I hear stories, a lot of people, when some people, when they're on their deathbed, one of the things people always say when they're on their deathbed is not that I wish I had more money or I wish I had this. Some people, a lot of people say, I wish I would have spent more time with family. I wish I would have spent more time with friends. And even if you're not on your deathbed, even if, like me, at 40 years old, sometimes I look back in my 20s and I tell myself, you know, I wish I, my life wasn't as busy as it was. I wish I took time out to do some of the things that I enjoyed, that I enjoyed. Because a lot of times we get so, so worried about, again, social media chasing the bag. That's what life is now, chasing the bag. You chase this, you're chasing this goal, you're chasing that, that you don't sit down and appreciate the things that are already around you. And you have to do that. You have to appreciate life as it is today. All right, and it may not be perfect. No one's life is perfect. But before you can focus on what's coming in the future, you have to be happy with what life is like today, no matter what situation you are in, understand? And again, and if you're in a bad situation, help ask God to get you out of that and take the steps to get out of those situations, all right? Um, take the steps to seek counseling if you need it. Take the steps to talk to other people if you need it. Take the steps to get you out of whatever situation you feel like you need to get out of. But if you're not in those type of situations, but you're that person that's just always thinking about the future, you have to sit and think about the now. Because there's a lot of things that are going on around us right now that we can be grateful for and that we can be thankful for. And we have to understand that and we have to be grateful for those things in order to possess, possess the self-love. Again, how do I help with self-love? Again, stop comparing. As I mentioned earlier, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Cater to your strengths. You know the things that you're good at. Instead of focusing on the things that I'm not good at, focus on the things that you're good at. Focus on the gifts that God has given you. Don't focus on the gifts that God hasn't given to you. All right? Focus on the things that are going around, that's going on in your life not right now and those gifts that's God's giving, that God has given you. And that'll help with your self-love because when you're always focusing on the negative side of things, of the things you don't have or the gifts that you don't possess, like me, I know I'll never be a singer. I don't, I don't have the voice to be a singer. I don't possess to be that, but I know that I have other gifts. And again, if, but if I focus on like, man, I wish I can get up there on a praise team and sing, and, and I, that's, that's what I become consumed of, guess what? I'm going to send myself into unnecessary depression because I'm worried about that gift that I don't have versus all the other gifts and things that, is God, bless, that, ha, that God has blessed me in my life. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So what is something else that help us with self-love is be, be gracious to your downfalls and flaws. All right. And I'm not saying that you have to accept your downfall. I'm not saying that you have to, to, to glorify your downfalls or I'm not saying that you have to, you know, highlight to the world your flaws, but you have to be gracious to those things. Everybody here, we all have flaws. We have things that we're good at. We have good characteristics, and we have those characteristics that we wish never pop up, that we try to hide under the rug. We have them. And being gracious to them doesn't mean that you're going to accept those things if those things are causing harm to yourself and to other people. But you have to understand that just like you have 20 things that, are, that you have 20 good characteristics, you have some flaws, and you can't let those, you can't be consumed by those flaws. All right. If you wear glasses, don't be consumed by, oh, man, I wish I didn't have to wear glasses. Or if if, you know, just just a lot of unnecessary things that we consume ourselves about. We all going to have flaws. And if you understand it and you, you accept you accept your flaws, then that'll help with your self love journey, because, again, no one's perfect. I know a lot of times. We look at people, we look at things, and we figure, man, this person has a perfect life, or this person has the perfect this, this person has the perfect that. You know, this person, you know, did this, this perfect person did that. And you know what? Sometimes things are not going to happen on our timeline. And as you get older, you're going to realize that sometimes, a lot of times, our timeline wasn't the correct timeline. We wanted something to happen in a certain moment. Guess what? It didn't happen, but that doesn't mean life is over. 
if if I don't have this certain car, guess what? It's not going to happen. Life, it doesn't mean anything because life is not over. If I don't have this certain house, if I don't have this certain job, or if I don't have this, or I don't have that, guess what? It's okay. We have to understand that our one thing that I learned in the last two years, especially after my mom's passing, is that I've, I really learned that you don't have any control over anything. I used to be one of those people, and here's a here's a a, a Mike Owens. I, I don't I don't know what I want to call it, but you know, just just me putting myself out there. I was always a person that I felt like I had to control every aspect. I had tunnel vision. This had to happen. This had to happen at this time, and and this was going to be the path in my life. But I learned over the years, especially the last few years, that you don't control anything. As much as we try to control it, we don't control a thing. If a lot of us look back at our lives and we look at the things we wanted to accomplish when we were teenagers versus what we've how our, how our life went now, from there to now, for the most part, it didn't go nowhere near as planned. When I was in high school, I said I was going to go to school, go to school for journalism, and by the time I was 25, I was going to be on someone's television telling the evening news. I always wanted to be a news anchor. That was my thing. I always wanted to be on someone's television telling you what the evening news was. But guess what? That didn't happen. But my life went so much better than that that I'm glad it didn't happen that way. But if I was one of those one of those people that was just so focused on that not happening and not seeing the other blessings that came from the other directions that I went, guess what? I'll be so depressed over something that doesn't even matter. So again, learn how to accept that you don't control life and you'll, you'll feel much better. You just get up in the morning, ask God, you know what, God guide me throughout the day and whichever direction you take me, Allow me to just excel in that direction. And if you live life in that way, guess what? You'll be way, you'll be, you'll be grateful. Another thing that we should do is celebrate the small victories. Yes. Celebrate the small things that happen throughout the day. Every victory doesn't have to be a big splash. Every victory doesn't mean that you have, that something really big had to happen in your life. If it's, I passed the test this day, or... I turned in this assignment on time, or I, I, you know, I just made it to Mandeville and back. That was a feat, because we know a lot of people don't make it home in the evening. But learn how to celebrate the small things, and you'll really appreciate the big things that happen in your life. But take life day by day. Don't worry about the week. Don't worry about the month. Don't worry about the year. Don't worry about the season. Just take life day by day. And the last thing that I want to leave with you is to be for self-love. Again, I mentioned earlier that you need others in life. But when you have those other people in your life, learn how to reciprocate the positive energy that family and friends give to you. And I want to, again, I want, I want to focus on that for a little bit because a lot of times, again, in, 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 on social media or in the world, we talk about, again, we talk about ghosting. We talk about my circle being small. You know, one of, one of the things that people like to post now is that, you know what, I appreciate the friends that understand when I disappear for a few weeks or a few months without anything. And I get it. Self-love is sometimes you have to disappear out of life. And I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that you have to re reciprocate the energy that, the, that those friends and family give to you, that positive energy. If you know someone has been there for you through the thick and thin, don't just disappear on those people and think it's okay. That's really a toxic trait, all right? If, someone's, if someone was there for you when they were going through a down time, but they, they still found the emotion and they still found the push to help you when they were going through a down time, don't push them off when you're going through a down time. Don't feel like it's okay to mistreat the people because that's not loving our neighbor, right? It's not okay to mistreat the people that have been there for you through thick and thin, and then when you go through the thick and thin, you just disappear and leave those people stranded. That's, that's not a good way to live, and that's not what God means when he wants us to love our neighbor. We have to be there. Sometimes we have to be there for people when we don't have the strength ourselves. But that doesn't mean that we're not possessing self-love. That doesn't mean that we're putting their needs above us. But we have to understand, in relationships, with friendships, it's a give and take thing. And if you're that type of person that, that always take, 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 
and never give or when you're going through something, you just kind of just disappear from the world and don't care about those other people. Guess what happened? That that that's a that's something that you have to think about inside. And that's something that you have to realize is a toxic trait. Again, reciprocate the positive energy that family and friends bring to you. So with that, that's all I had to see. Then, but my again, my biggest thing is when you're loving yourself, every, we all have to just kind of sit down and ask ourselves, what are the things that are important in our lives? Everyone's life is, lives are different. I can tell you the things that are important to me, but they may be different for you. They may be different for you. We all have to have that, that self-reflection. But don't let your happiness and don't let your self-love journey be dependent on how someone else treats you or what someone else thinks about you. Because at the end of the day, it's just you and God. And you have to understand that to love others, you have to love yourself. But to love yourself, your loving yourself has to come from inside, not from any outside forces. So I thank you guys for, I thank you guys for listening. I thank you for the opportunity, Bishop. And I just hope everyone was able to get a little bit of out about what I've talked about tonight. But again, just think self-love from God and from inner self. God bless. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the message on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Do we have any announcements on tonight? Do we have any new announcements on tonight? Amen. The altar is now open. Amen. Does anyone need any prayer on tonight? Amen. Does anyone need any prayer on tonight? Any one of you? Any one of you? All right. No one. Come on. Come on, buddy. We need some prayer. Dude said he wants to actually pray for y'all. So he's going to pray for y'all on tonight. Everybody for being here. I hope y'all have a good night when y'all leave. And I hope y'all have a good sleep. And when y'all leave, I hope y'all never get old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. He said that y'all never get old. Amen. I received that prayer. I received that, brother. Amen. 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 Are there any other? Amen. Does anyone else need prayer on tonight before we close out? No one else need prayer on tonight. Amen. Well, Brother Jabari is going to uh, give us a prayer of dismissal. Lord, I just want to thank you for all the young people coming out tonight and uh, doing the things of God. And I just want to thank everybody for coming to watch us. And we hope you have a safe drive home. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Consider yourself dismissed in the Lord. Amen. Now, before we leave, let's just give our young people one more. There you go. There we go. 